Hi, this is an overview of the Ludlum Model 2241-2 survey instrument. This is a portable microprocessor based digital scalar rate meter instrument. The instrument can be operated in two different modes. It can be operated as a, a rate meter or as a scalar. And it has independent adjustable alarms for both the rate meter and the scalar operating modes. Uh, the rate meter and scalar mode has two alarms that you can uh, set by opening the instrument up and following the directions on how to set or adjust those alarms. The first alarm level is indicated by the words alert on the uh, LCD screen and the second alarm level is indicated by the display of the word alarm and the uh, emitting of a continuous alarm tone uh, over the speaker and that will alarm whether you've got the audio turned on or off. The instrument also has a count overflow visual alarm indicating that the counting circuitry is near the maximum counting capability. When this occurs, the word O-flow for overflow will appear on the display. If the detector is being exposed to radiation intensities greater than that detector's maximum operating limit, the words overload will appear on the display. It's important that you watch for these visual alarm warnings uh, when you're using the instrument. One great feature of this instrument is the ability to calibrate it with two different types of detectors. It has a, a regulated high voltage supply with two independent set points adjustable from 400 to 2400 volts. Uh, as a result of that, it can be operated with a wide range of detectors including scintillation detectors, Geiger-Muller or GM detectors, and then proportional type detectors. Uh, the one I'm demonstrating here today has been calibrated with two different probes, uh, the model 44-9 Pancake GM probe, typically used for contamination surveys, and the uh, model 44-38 uh, probe that's typically used for uh, dose rate monitoring. You want to make sure that you're familiar with the capabilities and limitations of the detectors you're using. As an example, uh, this instrument is actually capable of displaying dose rates up to 9,999 R per hour or sieverts per hour, but the detection range of the detector is what's going to limit you. For example, this uh, dose rate detector right here, the Ludlum model 44-38 is a real common uh, detector, but the, this is going to be limited to up to about 500 MR per hour on this, this type of digital instrument that has dead time correction. So with this, with this detector attached, you're really going to be only good up to about 500 millirem per hour. So you want to be uh, real familiar with the detectors that you're using and the capabilities or, lim or limitations of those detectors. I've actually got another instrument that I've taken the handle off of just so you can see the face of the instrument as I go through some of the operating uh, characteristics of the instrument. The ability of this instrument to be calibrated with two different probes comes as a result of this uh, locking toggle switch which is labeled Detector 1 and Detector 2, or DET1 and DET2. This allows for a quick change of the uh, operating parameters when you're changing out your detectors or your probes. As you can see here, as I function through this locking toggle switch, the locking feature of this switch protects from inadvertently switching between the detector positions. To operate that protected switch, you simply pull up and then over to the desired selection. I think it's a good idea to label your detectors, either detector 1 or detector 2. You can see the ones I've got here uh, just have a little sticker on them saying detector 1 or detector 2, and that keeps you from getting mixed up and putting the uh, inadvertently putting the switch in the wrong place. For example, if you had detector 1 attached and had the instrument toggle switch set to the detector 2 position, you're going to get erroneous readings that, that aren't going to make sense while you're using the instrument. This instrument operates on two D-cell batteries that can be accessed by opening this battery compartment door that's located right here. Basically what you do is just turn this little thumb screw a quarter of a turn counterclockwise and then you can open the door. And as you can see uh, here the polarity markings are located inside or underneath the battery door. After you install your batteries, uh, you can just line the little notches up on this thumb screw back up, push that battery door turn that clockwise a quarter a turn to lock that battery lid back in place. 
You shouldn't store the instrument for more than 30 days uh, with the batteries in place because you could have battery seal failure which could uh, ruin the inside of that battery compartment. The instrument has a three position switch here that can be used to select the operating mode of the detector. The options are labeled off, rate meter, and then scalar. Once I switch this on you can see that it starts to uh, go through its startup sequence. But in general use the meter is going to be used uh, in that rate meter position and I'll discuss the scalar function here in a little bit. Uh, the audio on the instrument can be silenced or enabled by this little toggle switch right here that says AUD, AUD for audio. Uh, you can turn it on uh, and that'll give you your audio or turn it off and you won't hear anything except for the uh, alarm feature. Uh, it functions, as I said earlier, independent of this switch. So even in the off position, if you do reach the alarm threshold, the uh, instrument will actually give you an audible alarm. This two position toggle switch right next to the audio allows you to switch between fast or slow counting response time. The uh, fast response is used when performing typically your initial surveys or trying to locate a source of radiation and then switching to the slow response uh, when more accurate measurements are needed. You'll notice in that slow response position if you're using this that you're not going to see as much fluctuation in your meter reading when you, as it does when you're in the fast response mode. Turn this instrument on so you can see as I go through these other two red buttons here. The uh, first one here is labeled light. When depressed a single time, you can see the, uh, the backlight comes on for a preset uh, period of time. This one comes on for five seconds. That backlight is actually programmable from anywhere to five seconds up to 240 seconds. The reset button is used to zero the display or acknowledge either an alert or alarm condition. So if we just push that one time, it'll zero the instrument out. Okay, I've gone ahead and uh, hooked the probe up to this survey meter so I can demonstrate the LCD or liquid crystal display. This allows for a moving decimal point and provides a four digit display when it's in the rate meter mode like it is right now. You can see it's displaying three digits currently. When it's in the scalar mode, it'll display up to six digits the units that it can display are programmable and you can display counts per minute or counts per second. It's displaying counts per minute right now. Or uh, for, for radiation exposure rate measurements, you can do it in R per hour or sieverts per hour. Uh, the display units are auto ranging and they allow for multiples of micro or milli for the R per hour and sievert per hour and kilo for the counts per minute or counts per second. I'll show you the, uh, the auto ranging capability here. As I bring a source in, you'll see that that, dis that display starts to go up and it's going to auto range and there's going to be a K right there that appears before the C per M, meaning thousand, uh, thousands of counts per minute. So right there we're at about 6,000, 7,000 counts per minute. If I go up a little more, we should see the uh, alert come on. Uh, so you can kind of see what that alert screen looks like. And if I hit the reset like we talked about earlier, it'll reset that out, it clears the alarm, but since the source is still there, the uh, alert stays in place. Okay, I want to demonstrate that the same auto ranging capabilities that uh, you see in the counts per minute scale also apply when you've got it in the dose mode. Uh, I've got a dose exposure rate uh, detector hooked up. I'm going to reset it out. You'll notice it starts out in micro R per hour. So you see the little micro symbol before the R per hour. It looks like a backward U. Uh, I, bring a, I bring a source in here. You'll see it'll uh, auto range to MR per hour. And if we actually, there's our alert again, if we actually had a source that was hot enough, um, you'd actually see that M uh, actually disappear and your units would just be in R per hour. So it's going to start out in micro R and it's going to auto range up and then you'll see the M appear for a milli, that's a milli R per hour and then eventually if your source is hot enough you'll see the uh, M go away and it'll just display in R per hour. Okay let's uh, take a look at the scalar function. I brought this other instrument in that has the uh, handle attached. I'm going to unhook this uh, probe here. 
what we want to do to go into the scalar mode is just switch it to the scalar area there. You'll notice that on the uh, end of the handle here, there's a little push button. That's what's going to activate the scalar mode. And the uh, scalar will, pushing that button will activate the counting time. And the counting time is um, independently settable. You can open the instrument up and actually follow the instructions that came with the instrument on setting uh, that counting time. They come from the, from the factory, brand new, usually set at about 12 seconds. I've set this one to count for 15 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and push the button. I'll bring a source in here and, and set it on the probe. But you can see that the words um, counting will appear in the uh, LCD screen while that thing is counting for that 15 second period of time. As soon as it stops, that counting indicator goes away. And you can see for those 15 seconds that it counted, I got uh, a total number of counts of 6,546. So I would multiply that times 4, since it counted for 15 seconds, to get the total counts per minute, uh, in the case of this one and, and the way it's set. Uh, they do make sample holders that are designed to hold the probe in place. What I did here was just, you know, you could, in the field, count wipes or smears that way just by, uh, you know, trying to hold the sample up next to the detector. The sample holders are nice because they give you a repeatable geometry when counting swipes or smears. Here uh, you can see what I'm showing here, just a couple of examples uh, of holders. This one right here is designed to hold the Ludlum Model 44.9 probe that I've been using. here. It'll hold it in place and again give you that repeatable geometry and you just put your smear on the little, the little shelf there. They also make one for uh, this one here would fit the uh, model 44-3 which has a, uh, an open window and allows for detection of uh, alpha contaminated items. So that should give you a pretty good overview of the Ludlum 2241-2. There's a lot more to this instrument, a lot of capabilities that I haven't uh, covered in this short video. It's important that you're familiar with the capabilities of your instrument uh, how to perform an operational check prior to using the instrument. It's important to do that each time before you use the instrument to make sure it's functioning properly. But most importantly, I think, be familiar with the detectors that you have calibrated with your instrument. Uh, know what their limitations are uh, because most likely those are going to be the most limiting factors when they're using the instrument. So good luck.